Hey guys, it is Miss Casillas here. Today we're going to look at one and two step inequalities. We're going to answer the question, how do I solve and graph one and two step inequalities? To solve inequalities, we're going to use the same steps as solving equations. The only difference is we must flip the inequality sign when we multiply or divide both sides by a negative number. So if we multiply or divide by a negative, the inequality sign is going to flip. Otherwise, it's the exact same as solving equations. We are also going to graph the solution set to an inequality. So to do that, we first need to put an open circle if the inequality sign is less than or greater than, or a closed circle if the inequality sign is less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. If it's just less than or greater than, the number is not included, so that's why we have an open circle. If it is less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, that number is included, so that's why we have a closed circle. And then inequalities mean that we have a set of numbers, not just one number. So we're going to shade towards the direction on the number line that makes the inequality true. So let's go ahead and practice that with X is greater than two. That is going to be an open circle on two since two is not included. And then it is greater than two and one is not greater than two. So we're not gonna shade that direction. Three is greater than two. So we are going to shade towards the three. Okay, X is less than two. That is another open circle because two is not included and it's everything below two. So this time we are going to shade towards the one since one is less than two. Okay, X is greater than or equal to two. That means I'm going to have a closed circle on two because it could be equal to two, two is included, and it is three that is going to make that true. So I'm gonna shade towards the three. Okay, and then X is less than or equal to two, a closed circle on two, and then one is what would make this inequality true, not three. Okay, so now we're gonna practice solving and graphing a few inequalities. We'll solve it like an equation. Just remember to flip the sign if we multiply or divide by a negative, and then we will graph the solution set. So let's look at number one. X minus seven is greater than 37. So the only thing I need to do to isolate X is add seven to both sides. And I get X is greater than 37 plus seven is 44. So I'm going to put 44 in the middle of this number line. And then right below it is 43 and 42. And then right above it is 45 and 46. So I need an open circle on 44 since it is just greater than. So 44 is not included. And then it is 45 and 46 that are greater than 44. So I'm gonna to shade towards that direction. All right, let's look at number two. I have negative 12 X is greater than or equal to 156. So the only thing I need to do to get X by itself is divide by a negative 12. And since I'm dividing by a negative, I am going to flip the inequality sign. So I'll get X is less than or equal to 156 divided by negative 12 is negative 13. So now I'm gonna put negative 13 in the middle of my number line, negative 14 and negative 15 are right below it, and negative 12 and negative 11 are right above it. And this time I have a closed circle on negative 13, since it's equal to it is included, and I need numbers that are less than negative 13. So that would be negative 14 and negative 15. So I'm gonna to shade towards those numbers. Okay, number three, I have five halves X minus eight is less than negative 23. So first thing I need to do to get X by itself is add eight to both sides, remove the constant. And I get five halves X is less than negative 23 plus eight is negative 15. And now I have a reciprocal coefficient, or I'm sorry, I have a fraction coefficient, and to remove a fraction coefficient, we're gonna multiply by the reciprocal, and the reciprocal of 5 halves is 2 fifths. So negative 15 over 1 times 2 fifths would be negative 30 over 5, which is negative 6. So my final solution is going to be X 
is less than negative six. I'm not going to flip the inequality sign here because I multiplied by a positive number. We only flip it if what we're multiplying by is negative, not just if one of the numbers is negative. So inequality stays less than. So now I need to graph this. I'm gonna put negative six in the middle. And negative seven is right below it and negative eight, and then right above it is negative five and negative four. And I need numbers that are less than negative six, which would be negative seven and negative eight. So I'm going to put my open circle and shade in that direction. Okay, number four. I'm going to subtract 4.8 first to remove the constant. That zeroes out, I'm left with negative 2.4x is greater than or equal to 7.2 minus 4.8 is 2.4. And then I'm going to divide by a negative 2.4 and I'm dividing by a negative. So I have to flip the sign. So it'll be X is less than or equal to 2.4 divided by negative 2.4 is negative one. So negative one is gonna go in the middle. Negative two and negative three are right below it and then zero and one are right above it. And then I'll have a closed circle on negative one and I need numbers that are less than negative one, which would be negative three and negative two. So I'm gonna to shade towards that direction. All right, number five, trying to get W by itself. So I'm gonna remove that constant of 10. So I'm gonna subtract 10 from both sides. And I get 13 is less than or equal to negative two W. And then I'm going to divide by a negative two. I have to make sure I flip the inequality sign since I'm dividing by a negative. 13 divided by negative two is negative 6.5. Flip the inequality sign, W. Okay, if you want to leave it like this, you can. Um, I find it easier to work with inequalities in my head whenever the variable is on the left side of the equation. So I'm gonna flip this around. And when I flip this around, I have to flip the inequality sign. So this is the same thing as W is less than or equal to negative 6.5. See, it was the less than sign that was facing towards the W here. It needs to be the same thing here. Okay, there are a couple of different ways that you can graph um, partials on a number line. I'm going to put negative 6.5 in the middle number this time. And then with the next number line, I'll show you how I could do something different. So this would be negative 6.5 and then negative 7 and negative 7.5 would be right below it. And negative 6 and negative 5.5 would be right above it. And then it is a closed circle on negative 6.5. And I need numbers that are less than negative 6.5. So that would be negative 7 and negative 7.5. All right, let's look at number 6. I need to get y by itself. So first thing I'm going to do is subtract 11. And I get 4y is greater than negative 43 minus 11 is negative 50. Four. And then I'm going to divide by 4, and I get y, I don't have to flip the sign this time, is greater than negative 13.5. Okay, I'm going to do my number line a little bit differently this time. I'm only going to put integers on the number line. So negative 13 is, negative 13.5 is between negative 13 and negative 14. So that's what I'm going to put towards the middle of my number line. I'll have this be negative 13, negative 14, negative 15, and then right above it is negative 12 and negative 11. And then negative 13.5 is right in between negative 13 and negative 14. And then it would be an open circle there and then I am greater than negative 13.5, which would be at negative 12 and negative 11. So I'm gonna to shade towards that direction. 
So there's two ways that you can graph partials, non-whole numbers on a number line. You can actually put the 0.5 on the number line or you can just go between two numbers like I did there. All right, let's look at this last one. Janessa has $35 to spend on a pizza delivery. The cost of delivery and tip is $5 and each pizza is $6. Write and solve an inequality to find the greatest number of pizzas she can buy. So write and solve an inequality to find the greatest number of pizzas she can buy. That is what is missing. So let's define that as our variables. We're trying to figure out P, the number of pizzas she can buy. So she has $35 to spend on pizza. The cost of the delivery and tip is $5. And each pizza, so adding to that is $6. And the pizza was P, so this will be 6P. So we want the amount that she is going to spend to, it could be equal to 35, but it can't be more than 35. So we're going to put less than or equal to here. So there's our inequality here. $5 delivery and tips, $6 per pizza it can be less than or equal to the $35 she has to spend. Now let's solve this to figure out the greatest number of pizzas that she could buy. So we're going to subtract five and we get 6P is less than or equal to 30. And then we divide by six and we get P is less than or equal to five. So that means that she could buy five pizzas or less.